And those are common people that love Allah and His Messenger. They don't have proofs like the old woman who saw Fakhruddin al-Razi and all the people following him. And she said, who's that? He said, don't you know he has 70 proofs for the existence of God? And she said, if he didn't have 70 doubts, he wouldn't need 70 proofs. <laughs> and so Fakhruddin, when he heard that, he said, alaykum bi iman al ajais have the faith of old women. In other words, that's the real faith. It's that, it's in the heart, it's not in the intellect. But we need the intellect as well. And this is the power of Islam. It's got both these forces working. It's not this, you know, all these secularist uh, people in the West, they say is, uh, religion's irrational. No, we, we don't say that. We say it's rational. We actually believe in rationality. Our tradition believes in rationality. We're committed to rationality. But we also believe in the supra-rational. We believe that there are more things in the heavens and the earth than in our philosophies. That the intellect has a limit. I saw a poster once that had these two babies in a womb. They were twins. And the caption, one of the babies says to the other baby, do you believe in mom? Mm -hmm. And the other baby says, absolutely not. What's the proof for mom? Have you ever seen mom? And then he said, so I'm assuming you don't believe in life after mom? <laughs> right? And that is really, that is our state. You know, the atheist is like that fetus in the womb. It's like we've always been in this room. Imagine it, seriously. We've always, since the time we were born, we were born in this room, same group of people. We've always been in this room. And one day, somebody comes through the door and says, what are you all doing here? And we're like, what do you mean? <laughs> and, and we say, is there something other than here? This is like one tiny room in the midst of a vast world. You're in a place called Turkey. That you should see Istanbul. I mean, it's much nicer than this room. You know, or Konya. You haven't even been outside to take a look at Konya. And we're like, what's Konya? No, that's what, that's what these people are like. It's completely self-limiting people. That all they believe is what they can see, feel, touch, taste, and hear. They have no concept of what's outside. And yet, they believe in things that they can't see, touch, taste, feel, or hear. They believe in... You know, one of my teachers, Adler, he, he taught at uh, University of Chicago. Pretty formidable theologian. But he said he was once sitting with these nuclear physicists, and they were talking about these subatomic particles that could just be in one place and suddenly appear in another place without any motion between the two places. And he said, that's exactly how the scholastic described angels. He said they looked at him like he was a stark raving lunatic. So they can believe in these things that they've never seen. They've never seen that. It's all theoretical, it's all done through mathematics. And yet, they, they won't believe even in the possibility that maybe a prophet doesn't need mathematics to find out about things that we can't see, feel, hear, touch, or see. This is what we're dealing with in the modern world. We're dealing with limitations, self-limitations that we impose, impose on ourselves. So knowing where the truth is and what the truth is is the easy part, but it's discovering the truth that's the hard part. That's the difficulty. And that is whether or not the proposition is true or false. And we have ways of determining the soundness of terms that are very solid. We have ways of determining the soundness of reasoning that are very solid. But determining the truth of propositions is the most difficult. It's where all the problems arise. And it's where all the arguments are and all the debates are. I mean, there's debates in definitions and there can be some debates in logic and its validity because skepticism is real and there are skeptics in the world. But generally it's the propositions where people really have a hard time. That's where we flounder, falter, and fight.